George Crump, lead analyst with Stuart Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to be doing another in our series of Chalk Talk videos uh, featuring uh, specifically flash industry and solid state disk. Uh, joining me in, to help in this conversation is Rado Danilik from uh, Skyera, CEO. Thanks for joining us today, Rado. Thank you very much for inviting me. The, uh, one of the challenges that we see in the market today is you know, there's a lot of components that make up a flash system, right? We, and we've sort of drawn out the, the stack there. And we see vendors, you know, some vendors will provide a, a couple of these components and then they'll outsource or OEM the other uh, components. And then we see other vendors that maybe even outsource the whole thing. Uh, and, and clearly that has impact on what and how quickly you can deliver things to market, right? So walk us through kind of what that looks like and, and maybe give us a, a timeline and, and where we're heading with uh, the integration of these components. So <clears throat> let's start with stack as is today. You know, obviously Flash is produced by Flash vendors and uh, understanding how the media works is very important to achieve high reliability and uh, good performance and low cost. Now, there are very few vendors which they produce controller. Uh, some of the vendors, they produce also reference firmware. The firmware uh, is one of the key components and interestingly is one of the, one of the largest contributors of the failure uh, in addition to hardware failures. So the controller is what manages things that we hear about a lot like wear leveling and uh, that those sort of, sort of endurance optimization sort exactly. of things. Exactly. Okay. And capability of controller defined what kind of flash you can use. Uh, controllers which have been designed for 34 nanometer flash or older, they cannot typically handle 19 nanometer flash and so on. So this has to continually advance to keep up with the changing exactly. lithographies. Okay. It has to be in lockstep with the flash. Now, also the firmware written uh, on that controller uh, is very important. There are two models in the market. One, that the customer who buy the controller and build the SSD, they write their own firmware. Another model is that it's turnkey solution from the controller uh, vendors. Now, turnkey solution from controller vendors provide kind of unified uh, performance, a unified solution. Vendors cannot differentiate. Uh, now, the vendors who are producing on firmware, the quality varies, depends on the R&D budget and so on. So the quality highly varies depending and on the vendor and the reliability. Okay. Now, so as a system builder, I basically have two choices in the controller thing, right? I, I'm going to either uh, leverage existing uh, firmware to, um, that, that is being provided to me, and then at that, I, what I give up there is some control, but maybe I gain a little, okay, it's maybe broader testing, that company might have a bigger R&D budget. But if I can write my own firmware, then I'm, uh, I, I've got better control over how that controller acts and, and I can maybe have a better chance of differentiating myself in the market. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Now, depending on your budget, uh, you will test that to various degrees and the quality depends on your testing. Right. So I risk quality a little bit. So, so generally, uh, there is very high fail rate uh, in SSD built by third parties. Okay. Now, and the reason is because there are few hundred thousand lines of the firmware. More lines of the firmware you have, more bugs. Right. Now, the next layer is the RAID. Uh, there are very few RAID vendors which they provide silicon uh, together with the software stack and all the cards. Now, on the upper uh, layer of the system level uh, functionalities, there are third parties which they can provide uh, the duplication software, compression software, and the uh, upper layer of the management like snapshot, clones, and so on. So okay. this is the whole stack. So now in the system layer, that's where we're kind of getting vendors to talk about how they can uh, you know, keep, it, uh, keep Flash affordable by compressing and deduplicating and things like that. And, um, and then in the, in the upper level software, that's going to be more the kind of the enterprise services that we've become accustomed to, like snapshots and things like that. That's, that's right. That's okay. correct. So uh, where are we kind of, where, where have we seen this evolve? I guess like in the early days, we really saw a lot of almost pure OEM play, right? Where yes. uh, the major, the le let's call them the legacy storage vendors, they would uh, just go out and buy a drive, right? Exactly. The volume was not sufficient enough to justify uh, R&D to build Flash specific system. So the easiest penetration was just build like hard drive compatible SSD, plug it into existing system and you can go. Now, the disadvantage is the neither latency was improved 
and performance was limited by legacy storage stacks, by kind right. of 20th century technology. Now, uh, that led to basically uh, moving to special interfaces around the flash build, like NVMe, PCI Express Bay interfaces to get full benefit of performance and the latency. So what, what we saw then, what you're saying is in the early days we saw um, legacy storage systems essentially treating memory as if it was a fast hard drive, exactly. right? And, and so the bottleneck probably moved to sort of the architecture around that exactly. storage system. And then to start to address that, we start to saw uh, vendors emerge that had specific interfaces around specifically flash or memory-based storage. Exactly. Okay. Now, also side effect is if you are uh, SSD assembly house, you are buying flash from third parties, you assemble the system or subsystem, and then you sell it with 30 to 50 percent gross margin. Mm -hmm. So anybody who is buying uh, SSDs are paying for margin stacking. Sure. We'll be automatically in disadvantage uh, to the vendors who are t just buying the flesh and building whole system. Right. So clearly, the more of this you buy, the the your cost to build the system goes up, right? Because exactly. you're essentially outsourcing some level of intelligence exactly. and components and things like that. Exactly. Okay. So the next layer, next layer is the rate. Now. Conventional hard drive based RAID systems uh, for every write, for random writes, RAID 6, it requires you to have additional two writes, so three total writes. Now, that was not the problem for hard drive based system because writes endurance was not limited. For flash based system, that's definitely a problem. So, uh, the te there are technologies uh, developed, uh, uh, which our company developed, which for every write, uh, slightly more than one write is needed to achieve RAID functionality. Now we are coming to a very interesting point. To achieve that capability, the protocol between RAID and controller uh, has to be very different than existing storage interfaces to achieve that. And uh, also the software has to interact in a very specific way. The previously, the innovation was uh, limited because uh, the controller vendor and the RAID vendor, they follow standard interfaces and you know, if you create controller with completely new uh, interface, you will be unable to plug in into anything. When you develop a RAID and you don't have controller support, you cannot achieve these capabilities. Sure. So, importance of vertical integration allows us that we say, okay, we don't need to rely on a standard interface here and develop new technology. You can move faster than two independent industries which they have to intercept at a certain right. point of the time. So what you're saying there is one of the advantages to vertical integration is that these two, if, you're, if you own both of these components, you don't need, you can essentially develop a proprietary connection because you don't need to worry right. about being right. standards exactly. around the world. And you okay. can move very quickly, otherwise it takes years to agree and synchronize independent industry and product releases. And, well, wouldn't that also reduce cost too? By of control course, it's that? Yeah. significantly reduce cost. Uh, also, there are a lot of software layers because the RAID system has to work with many hard drives, work with many systems, and uh, has a lot of management features. So, interestingly, more than 80% of the code has nothing to do with read writes. Are working to maybe compatible with wide range of the drives oh, and right. wide range of the system and manage that. So. If you are vertically integrated, you don't need to produce this 100% of the code. You can focus only on 20% functionality, which is much simpler, tends to have less bugs, and has better performance. So now we've sort of what we're saying here is we've moved to that next generation of flash system that you know where in the beginning we started out with a total OEM model. Then we kind of moved to maybe a mix of model where you could add some specific value. And then really now the sort of the, the ultimate end game is a, a totally vertically integrated system where all of these components are provided by one vendor. Exactly. And the reason is not NIH, not invented here. It's uh, to provide the benefit on performance and reliability. For example, as I mentioned, uh, the code base when it's reduced by 5x on the rate component level, because system duplicates many functionalities which controller is doing, system actually when it's designed properly can allow to remove completely a few hundred ton, thousand lines of the software written on the controller side. And this is number one failure source in SSDs. So amount of the code is dramatically lower. So Rada, that's, that's, that's really good information, and, and I, I think what we're seeing here is the cost benefits as, as a company owns more of the stack, they're able to drive out 
additional cost because of the margin stacking that we exactly. talked about, and, and also uh, increased quality because you don't have these uh, tangent lines of exactly. code that are needed anymore. Exactly. Right? Okay, great. There's also performance and innovation because less code it is. If you want to change the functionality, you can move it faster. Sure, easier to adapt to new technologies, exactly. things like that. Okay, great. Well, thank you for joining us today, Rado. Thank you. Very uh, much, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in today.